these guys were making this popcorn concoction and they were taking microwave popcorn, popping it, and then they would melt caramel, mix in peanut butter, mix it all up, throw in cinnamon toast crunch, M&Ms, and chopped up Rocky Road candy bars. And they mix it all up in a big garbage bag, then put it into smaller garbage bags, all clean, and trade it out. And one day, everybody would get all excited when these guys made this stuff. And one day I tried it and I was like, this is, this is a business. I had people start sending me information on the popcorn industry. And I wrote a small business plan. When I got home, I started looking at it. I started making this for my friends and family. And they were like, oh my God, you got to sell this stuff. So in 2011, I made a batch up and I put it into plastic bags and I took it to a local grocery near my house. And I dropped it off and the manager called me like two or three days later. He's like, Hey, he goes, we want to bring this in. I'm like, okay, I'll make it. I'll bring it to you. You guys can pay me when you sell. He goes, no, no, we're going to buy it. And I called it the original big house. And it was an unbelievable product. He started selling it. And then they put it into three more of their stores. And I was like, Hey, I, I have a business here. And then I started adding other flavors and I did a caramel, really high level caramel. And then I did a high level cinnamon caramel and it's selling really well, you know, and I, now I'm doing these samplings in these grocery stores and I'm like, this is really fun and cool, but how am I going to grow this business, right? I mean, I have, there's everything else on this shelf is a caramel or a this or that, and there's nothing really unique about it. So I said to my wife, I said, I need to do something more unique to make this a more innovative product. And she said, you should do chocolate, salted caramel, and white truffle. Those are really trending flavors right now. So I did put them on the shelf. They started selling. And now other stores started to call me. I'm like, okay, I have a, I need to get a place to make this. I can't make it in my home anymore. Got a small facility. And I hired a consultant in the food business because I didn't know what I was doing. She tried the white truffle. She goes, this is the most amazing product I've ever had. She goes, you know, Oprah likes white truffle. I said, really? I said, well, I'll send her some. And I shipped some out to O Magazine for them to try. And Just their headquarters? Like you just found their I headquarters? I did. Just... Yeah, in New York. How much did you send them? Just five bags. Back. Okay. Yeah. Several different ones, but mostly uh -huh. the white truffle. I mean, it was... Three white truffle, a, a big house, and a chocolate salted caramel. Mm -hmm. Anything Two else? Any like stories behind it or where no, it came from? Nothing. Or just the okay. No. Nope. I just said I heard Oprah likes white truffle. I make an amazing white truffle. I mean, just, I wrote a little note. Two weeks later, I get a call. On a Friday afternoon, I'm in this tiny little thing where I make my popcorn. It's about 1,400 square feet. I'm from O Magazine. I'm like, yeah, this is David. She goes, yes. Hey, Oprah loves your white truffle. We'd like to order five cases. We're having a meeting here tomorrow. I go, tomorrow's Saturday. She goes, we'll give you our FedEx number. Don't worry. She goes, can you, can you get it to us? I'm like, absolutely. I'm, we had to go make it. We made it, got it to FedEx, shipped it out. They ordered it a few more times. And then they said they were putting it in the magazine. And it just went crazy. It went ballistic. And uh, that company, over the next three years, turned from popcorn into potato chips, into condiments. We were in 35 countries. I was at all Starbucks stores. I was at Google, Facebook. We were almost every grocer in the, in the U.S. And then I licensed a food company in Russia to build a plant and to produce it there. And I licensed a company, a candy company in Japan to also build a plant and, and distribute it there. As I grew Popcorn May, my first employee was my first cellmate who never had a job, a real job before. He went by Rex. He said, I wish I could be a businessman like you. I said, you are a businessman. You have salespeople, you have customers, you have payables, you have receivables. I said, you just had the wrong product, Rex, and that's why you're here. But you ran a business. And he's like, oh my God. So he was my first partner. As we grew over the next three or four years, we hired 250 men and women that were transitioning and coming back into the society. And I wanted to give them opportunities. And many of them, some have still worked for me here today at Good Planet. Some have gone on to other careers. Some weren't successful, but I really wanted to give back to the community. And I started working with the Department of Corrections to build these opportunities and, and to find a better pathway for these guys. I worked with the Virgin Group. I worked with Dave's Killer Bread Foundation. I worked with the prosecutor's office. And we all collaborated, and I still do today. It kind of changed who I am and I wanted, really wanted to change our community for the better and give people opportunity to get their lives on track where they weren't before. That prosecutor made all this happen. Mm -hmm. First off, where is she today? 
probably watching all this, right? Uh, she's probably not very happy with the success. I mean, when I, once I got into Oprah and on TV, she's probably not too happy, you know? And I'm like, I wrote this business plan there and it was really with intent. I mean, trust me, I was intent on coming up with a business there to really piss her off. I mean, to really say, okay, I'm going to turn this into something great no, somehow or another. I was determined to do that. Not only did it work out for me, but it worked out for the community. Like I said, it changed me as a person to really become, I think, more human and not just self-centered and doing it for David, but to do it for the greater being, I guess, right? Hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.